Welcome to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. We're really glad to have everybody with us today. Uh, we've got the lines muted, but if anybody needs to unmute when they want to speak, that is star 7. Uh, and we have a very uh, packed agenda today. So um, Matt, are there any new folks that we want to welcome on the call this week before we go into our first agenda item? Uh, we could maybe take a hello to Juan from uh, Fablab who's here. Right on. Hello, Juan, and welcome. Are you there? Star 7 to unmute. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. This is Juan Gonzalez from uh, Fab Spaces, and I'm, uh, I've been following this group for a while, but decided to join the call as of now. Right on. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, that said, why don't we go ahead and move to our first agenda item. Mr. Mark Sermon, do you want to tell us about Webmaker 2013? Done. Um, just joking. I guess it doesn't work well on a, a, uh, on a conference call. So hello, everybody. Um, I, uh, as, as we said two weeks ago on this call, we are in the midst of figuring out what we do next year with Webmaker. Um, which really is just a follow through on what we started this year with Webmaker. And we talked a little bit about top level goals last time and about really moving into a product that we think can be popular, that people can love, uh, and taking what we have a foundation with now and really kind of shooting it through the roof. Um, and given actually some of my future metaphors that will play, play out well, uh, there are rocket ships involved in this conversation. Um, in any case, uh, what I had said two weeks ago is that um, a number I was going to talk with, or I'm working with a number of people across Mozilla, across the WebMaker community on the specifics of how do we get to that product that people love, how do we get to that um, much more kind of popular mainstream version of WebMaker from the, the places we've started. And so based on, I would say, dozens of conversations, uh, I've kind of pulled everything together into a 2013 uh, kind of planning outline, which is really just top-level strategy. It's not product roadmaps. It's not design documentation. It's sort of where our priorities are. Uh, and so that is linked from the Etherpad if the Etherpad is functioning for you. Uh, and it's on wiki.mozilla.org slash capital W webmaker slash 2013 plans uh, if it's not. And I'm not going to go through this line by line. And in fact, probably what I'll mostly do is hit some highlights uh, and, uh, and then kind of look for questions in IRC or in the Etherpad, because I think that's going to be more useful. Uh, I don't need to read for everybody. Um, but at the, you know, at the top level, uh, and I am just going through this wiki page right now, so, so follow along, um, you know, the context of this is we still have the same big vision of building a generation of web makers. Uh, and I think we still have, I know we still have the, a focus on that to do that, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of people need to understand and learn how the web works at a much deeper level, both technically and culturally. And so you know, the, the goal doesn't change this year at the top level, and the idea that learning is central to it uh, doesn't change either. Uh, I think that the two things that start to, to change, um, even though they may sound familiar, at least for me I mean something a little bit different, is that we both need a product strategy and a movement strategy. Uh, and they're not necessarily the same thing. Um, and if you think about, um, well actually I won't go into that distracting metaphor. I'll blog about that later. Um, so, so what that looks like concretely is we need to double down on the products we started to build with Thimble, with Popcorn, with Extra Goggles, with Webmaker.org, uh, but we need to be more producty about them. Uh, at the same time, I think we need to build a big community that is the, the heart of that movement which we started with Summer Code Party, but really that was a kind of quick one-off. Uh, and also that we have actually started at Hive, a, a community is really focused on getting people excited about the creative potential of the web uh, and learning those skills. And so those are the two big strategies for this year. Again, not totally different than last year, but I think the important thing is to see them as separate things that are going to have separate leadership and are going to reinforce each other. Um, and, and my take based on a lot of these conversations on the product part, and actually I'll back up, it says in there to get to the rocket ship metaphor, uh, and this is better explained in my blog post, uh, rocket and play payload under product. We had a conversation, a bunch of us, with uh, the VP engineering of, of Firefox platform, Jonathan Nightingale, 
uh, about 10 days ago. And what he said is, you know, to, Firefox works because it's both, you know, it's got a payload that we want to deliver, which is, you know, user choice and, um, and web standards and, and all of those kind of things that Mozilla stands for. But it only gets delivered because the rocket ship is something that everybody wants. Everybody wants a fast web browser. Uh, everybody wants something, you know, certainly uh, in 2003 that wasn't Internet Explorer. And in order to compete, like, you need that. You need something that people want that is going to bring, uh, bring home the stuff that we believe in. Um, and so WebMaker, I don't think we've looked at it in that way. Uh, I think we've got a lot of payload and not a lot of rocket ship yet, although I think we started to see little bits of the rocket ship. Um, and so that's, uh, that's the thing we need to kind of double down or, and start to refine. And so the straw man for how we might do that uh, is to really focus on the differentiating tool that we have in WebMaker, uh, which is the, the idea of web pages that move, the idea that video slideshows, um, other things that are popcorn-esque, although it may not be popcorn, uh, the combined content and code from across the web are things that nobody has, that in our early versions of showing them to people, people think are cool, uh, and that um, you know, I think give us something that is the essence of WebMaker, even if we've got everything else wrapped around it, symbol pages, goggles editing, badges, um, gives us something that has the essence of what we're talking about, but that also is different and unique in the market. Um, and so that's, that's a, I think, a way we can think about building that rocket ship is, you know, if, what, what do we do to make popcorn beat Tumblr? Uh, or how do we have, you know, somebody combines all of our tools into one thing where I can make, you know, a, a, something that may feel like a video or a slideshow but really could only be made on the web. Changes every time you see it. Uh, it's changeable by everybody. Um, and so I, I think that can be a popular product, but, and certainly it's not my idea. It comes from sort of across this team, I think other people think that can be a popular product. The, the payload on that is I think the stuff we talk about more and that we've already got the basis of, certainly in popcorn we have it, which is a remix button for everything. The idea that all content on the web works like the web uh, and isn't locked up, that you can see the pieces of it, uh, and so on. So, uh, and I think you know, inside of that, that those tools and the content uh, themselves show you how the web works. That the view source nature, the peer review nature, the remix nature of what we do is actually a way to learn and a way to teach. So that's what I would put out there as a kind of overall kind of product thinking piece. And I'll take, kind of dive into questions on that in a second. But the movement piece, I think at this stage, is really focused on the teachers, the mentors, the instructors, the techies who want to show the kind of stuff we believe in that we're building to other people. And we saw that with Summer Code Party. But also, I think really importantly, uh, it really is the emphasis on the kind of stuff we're doing. If you look at Summer Code Parties, I mean, the ones that I was at that were the best um, had everything from like hacking toys to using Thimble to Scratch to uh, Arduino. And so I, I think that we're a part of something bigger. And the movement piece of what we're doing, the community piece of what we're doing, I think has to tie back to that uh, bigger maker movement. And it's interesting, I was talking to Mitchell about this yesterday. In a lot of ways, you know, Firefox both drafted in the, in the wind of the open source movement, which certainly predated uh, Firefox, um, but also kind of made open source even more legitimate, especially with consumers. And if we can think about the maker movement as the equivalent of the open source movement and WebMaker as the equivalent of Firefox, that's really the strategy in terms of that community effort. Um, so I think that, that will be equally important to executing on the, the product this year. <coughs> so I'm not going to go through all the individual goals or, or the audience stuff. I think we can, we'll have lots of conversations about that. Maybe there's some in the Etherpad that I'm not quite looking at right now. The last thing I just want to say before throwing out the question is, is about kind of changes that I think that this points to. Uh, and so if you go to that main changes in 2013 section, uh, I think the biggest change is, that fo is focusing WebMaker on the idea of animating the web, this kind of idea that web pages that move or videos that are rendered in real time that you can remix or slideshows that uh, pull stuff from across the web, whatever that is. And I think it evolves into animations, evolves into games over time. But the idea that whatever that is is our core differentiating feature, I think is something that changes. It doesn't mean that we're not building all of the other things, but the thing I think will become known for first <coughs> by people who make content is that. Uh, because I think it's sexy and, and uh, nobody else has got it yet. 
What it also means then is Symbol Popcorn Maker and X-ray goggles and badges uh, become more tightly integrated. Um, and that's something that people have talked about we haven't done yet. Uh, we'll see that webmaker.org becomes a jumping off point for the stuff people actually make, uh, including a set of flex flexible gallery tools, um, which we can talk about ideas on that uh, more later. But it is an idea that it's not just one gallery for everything, that galleries are kind of ways to, to lend into what you've made, what your friends have made, uh, and things that you're interested in. And the, the, two, the, the one big shift, which is the second last bullet there, is I have a pretty strong feeling, and I know a lot of people share this feeling, that the most disruptive thing we can do if WebMaker is successful is infect existing social networks with remixable content. And by infecting them, that remix button then takes you back out into WebMaker and starts to break the edges of how those networks work. And that both is a way for us to have relevance because where people watch videos or see slideshows or share content is in social networks, but also the idea of being able to pull you into a place where you can do something you can't do there starts to kind of you know, shift how people think about those things. Uh, and then the last main change is I think we're going to have to still work on the branding and how we organize this, but our community and kind of instructor and mentor and evangelist engagement stuff, they all need to come together into one cohesive global community. So things like Hive and the Code Party need to be leveraged and then kind of brought into something much, much bigger than what we're doing now. So those are the main changes. My friend Mary is, is, uh, has got uh, questions in the Etherpad. So, oh, no, I have two screens. This is awesome. Uh, so I think that the, on the, um, I'm going to say this and try not to insult my boss. Uh, on the question of we know we're winning piece, that language comes out of a conversation I had with Mitchell, the, the two-hour conversation I had with Mitchell yesterday. Um, so I think, it, yes, it could be simpler. I think the more important uh, thing is that we figure out what the metrics are for it. Um, so I, I don't have any attachment to that language, although uh, I think it, it is the thing we're aiming at in the end. So, so the best way to provide feedback on the plan is to uh, go into the WebMaker um, mailing list or news group or whatever technology you choose, Google group. Um, so I've started five threads in there um, based on different pieces of that. One is a general thread, uh, and then there's one on product, one on community, one on audience, and another one I can't remember. Um, oh, on, one on changes. Uh, so go into those, and I think more importantly, um, I really want us all to take like some time in the next 24 hours to reach out to one or two or five people who we think are on the edges of being involved in this. I mean, think of the, a lot of the, the people who are involved in doing summer code parties and get them involved in that news group or in that mailing list and providing feedback. Um, you know, getting the whole world into that discussion and having a, a total fire hose of feedback is not helpful, although it could happen. Uh, but getting the people who care most about what we're doing to feel that they're involved in shaping what we do next uh, and getting their ideas is absolutely critical. And you know, I had a conversation with a couple of you know, Joe from Brighton and Emma from Victoria in, in, um, in London. And they're like, how do I get more involved in, in driving where this goes? And the only way we do that is all of us to reach out to those people we know and let them know about that wiki and let them know that they should go into that news group. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So there's a question about curriculum, and the answer is yes. Uh, and there is... Uh, <coughs> How do we uh, distinguish between our tools becoming popular uh, and our mission being successful? So I think there's, there's lots of ways. Uh, certainly one of the things that we're focused on this year or need to be focused this year is measuring ourselves as we go. And so I think making sure we have metrics that are both mission-based metrics and, uh, and popularity metrics is going to be a, a factor or is going to be one of the ways we deal with that question on line 166. And so 
the, the first metric, which is going to be sort of numbers of makers that we still need to define, has to do with people coming back and making things more than once. So Im implicit in that is a qualitative sense of it's not just popular, but it's a matter of popular for what. And <coughs> popular for what means that people are coming and publishing things which uh, have the Remux belt button built into them, have some of our values built into them. Um, I think we're not going to let people publish things that don't operate in that way. And so if, if our measure of popular is, is popular with people who are publishing things in a way that reflects our values, um, I think that's actually a better mission me uh, metric than the number of people who are um, the number of people who are the you know daily users of Firefox. Um, the other thing I think though that from the Firefox kind of rocket payload metaphor is you need popularity even amongst people who are not understanding that you're in the mission in order to have impact. And so I think some more qualitative looks at how we're impacting the ecosystem um, as opposed to just popularity are going to be uh, key. Uh, yes, Anne Marie Thomas is in the loop for sure. Uh, we would love her to be more in the loop even to get her on the call. Um, so I'm looking at their other questions. So that looks like it. Uh, I'm just going up to the. Okay. So if there are other questions, um, throw them in there. But I'm not seeing them. Um, and I guess the the real thing, like it is my humble and uh, pushy ask, which is get the people who you think care about this stuff into that news group or commenting on uh, on that blog post or write your own blog posts like strongly encouraged over the next couple of days. Um, you know, the, the more we can get the right people in this conversation in the, in the next couple of weeks, uh, which means you know, getting stuff going in the next couple of days, uh, I think the, the better. And the other thing I would say is, um, as, I, as I laid out, this is really top level stuff and in some ways probably not that surprising. Um, what's happening is Aaron, Brett, and Jess are working on a, a deeper dive in terms of product vision document uh, that will also get, have an opportunity for lots of feedback. Um, and uh, Chris, and Mich Chris Lawrence and Michelle Thorne and others are working on sort of an instructor community document. And there's going to be a number of other pieces that go deeper on this uh, to engage with. So I think that's it for now. I'm just scanning around. Um, and so are we going to move to Hive Story Camp or I think we're going to move to Ryan talking about uh, organizational stuff. It's not actually in the etherpad, but I think Ryan is going to step in and talk at this point in terms of how, some, how we work will change. Is that true, Ryan, or is that some later time? Hey, Ryan, are you there? I think I'm here. Am I here? Yep. Yes, you are. Look at that. Star 7 to unmute. It actually works. I've only heard it a million times. Um, so uh, Mark asked me to come on and talk a little bit about how um, we want to structure our teams uh, in order to hit these goals. And so we've been working with um, some of the managers to pull together some team structure changes to help us hit these goals. Um, the underlying theme is really about giving those teams uh, some, the, the way to, or a way to focus on the specific areas so that they can go faster and also uh, <coughs> to give them some, uh, you know, that, that focus also allowing uh, people to understand in the community where they can slot in and be helpful. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that uh, Matt's talked about a lot is the the, um, the theory of contribution that John O'Bacon puts forward. And one of the things they talk about very specifically is having really clear teams so that people understand where they can go in order to contribute. So this is a piece of that as well. Um, underneath all of this uh, structure work, uh, we're really working hard to figure out how to add more rigor to our processes, uh, to the way that we measure. Uh, any kind of analysis uh, that uh, we want to put on top of that to know if we're actually hitting these targets. Because uh, what we've set out is pretty ambitious, which it should be, um, but we need to know if we're, if we're getting there and, uh, and how that's going. So I'm going to post in the Etherpad uh, a PDF 
at line 149, you'll see it, um, which has three slides in it. And if you go to the first slide uh, in that PDF, it's at line 149. Line 149. Uh, on the first slide, what you're actually going to see is the org structure uh, or team structure that we had in place uh, before we launched WebMaker. And we put this in place about a year ago. Uh, and I've put some small boxes underneath it to sort of add, uh, explain some of the functional uh, work that was going on underneath it. Um, so under learning, we had the WebMaker tools, which eventually became Thimble. Um, popcorn Maker um, and Badges uh, and the WebMaker Projects teams. Um, under Software, we were doing the engineering and we were doing Web Dev. Under Ops, we had Finance and Grant Seeking uh, work, which was um, then we had Engagement, which was a large bucket for uh, that included communications, the festival, uh, and our outward uh, reaching individual donation work. And then we had a big bucket called Programs, where we had parked Hive, Open News, US Ignite, Collusion Science, and um, other things that came up as we went. And so what we've worked to do is to try and evolve that. And what we're really doing is uh, splitting some of those up to give them a bit more focus. So if you go to the second slide, what you see is that uh, learning splits and becomes product and content. Um, which allows the um, WebMaker tools and badges to sit under product um, and the WebMaker projects uh, to sit under content. It's not that different from where we were, but it, uh, it comes with uh, some additional leadership, which I'll get to in a minute, that allows some more focus. Um, engineering becomes what it always was, and we just didn't call it that, which is software engineering and web dev is a single team. And so that's not really that much of a change, but we're calling it engineering now. Um, there are new teams uh, for community labs uh, and communications, um, which um, community now has the Mozilla Festival and what I'm calling Hive Global, which is to say this year we expect more hives to come online. It's a project we've been working on actively, um, and so it's recognizing that that's actually becoming a much larger project in addition to Hive New York. Uh, then finance communications, uh, and development. Uh, development is the uh, euphemism for all manners of revenue generation. So grants, uh, which is the work that's been previously led by Jeffrey, it's still led by Jeffrey, uh, and the donations work moves under development. So it's the, um, in one meeting it, we called finance the money we do have and development the money we don't have yet. Um, communications becomes a more focused team uh, for marketing, PR, communications development. Uh, and labs becomes a new space, which I'm actually going to let Mark, Mark talk a bit about the vision for labs, uh, because it's a thing that we're doing uh, that, that crosses over with the work that Mozilla more broadly is doing around labs. Um, but it also becomes a space where we can ask questions uh, and explore around the product. So the next slide um, talks about who we've asked to step up into a more uh, into leadership roles. And I actually want to throw it back to Mark to talk through uh, those. Um, eight folks and uh, maybe the, do sort of a, a top line of where their, what their responsibility is. Right. So I guess the, you know, the preamble to all of what Ryan said is as we grow, uh, we have to become more of a networked organization, both like working with people outside the organization uh, and just how we work as a team, that the kind of just being in your kind of particular group uh, or us just being the staff is not going to scale, even to the number of people we're going to have working here. And so you know, one of the reasons that this whole kind of thing is, is just as a set of boxes as, as opposed to a hierarchy is we're really trying to build a core group of people who have got the experience with Mozilla, experience with their subject matter, who are going to enable all of us to kind of step up and lead and also allow all of us to be able to form into different teams around different projects and different features. Um, and so what that means in product is that Aaron, who had been managing Thimble and badges, takes on WebMaker tools, but with a set of product managers under her. Um, and so I think in particular, uh, she and Brett are going to need to find somebody who takes on some of Brett's responsi responsibilities in uh, leading popcorn or integrating popcorn into the overall WebMaker suite, which will have uh, its own kind of product manager. 
Um, and then Brett will continue in kind of half of what his role was last time, but in a much bigger way, which as, is as kind of the senior director of chief dog fooding. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things I think really uh, helps popcorn stand apart as something that, that people are excited about is this, this relationship between engineering and product and content, um, where with things like TED, we're actually like pushing the product. And I think that's something that we want to have be our like everyday practice for all of our tools. But what you need is a group of people who are either doing that all the time or bringing in people to do that. And so, you know, whether it's stuff we make, like what we made for TED, or whether we bring in Baratundi or Lady Gaga or whoever, or whether we make stuff for somebody like Telefonica, the idea is that we actually have a dog fooding engine and a dog fooding department incredibly tightly tied to product development. Um, and so Brett doesn't leave leading uh, popcorn, but moves into a, a broader dog fooding role uh, across all of our doing. And then Chris Magavoy, backed by David and David, uh, takes a, a lead role in engineering, uh, which I think is, is something people probably have seen coming for a while, uh, and, and certainly I welcome. Uh, and, I, and I think the two Davids uh, you know, will still be there to bring you know, the Mozilla history and horsepower uh, to the table. And Chris Lawrence uh, steps up into leading the overall community piece, which as I said before, really needs to start with the instructor community um, and doing something much bigger than what we're doing with Hive um, and Summer Code Party, but on the same models and the same principles. Um, Jeffrey moves into a sort of a, an, an unsurprising role as the guy who wakes up every day thinking about money, because um, he already does that. Marilyn continues doing exactly what she is awesomely doing now. Um, we need a new senior director of communications. And David Asher is uh, moving into driving labs, uh, at least for now, and it, that becomes a Mozilla-wide role, we hope. So that's, that's the overall picture. Uh, Ryan and I are still in the, in the picture as uh, Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer. Um, it's not, I think we're going to work with all eight of these people as well as the rest of the team. And so I think in this sort of network management model, uh, we specifically didn't put ourselves here and show who's reporting to us because uh, we want that at least for a while to be fluid and I think over time to, to be something that is flexible and responsive and that we're available to, to everybody across the team. Um, and as, as Ryan flagged, the labs thing is worth probably calling out for two reasons. One is, well, actually David may, may want to come on and say something in a second about it, but uh, the, the vision is with the old middle labs and with Drumbeat, we sort of were good at pulling people together and walking around with a flashlight, and we're lucky. We found Popcorn, we found Symbol, we found Webmaker, uh, we found Persona, we sort of found parts of Firefox OS. But it, you know, it wasn't, neither of those initiatives were ways for us to ask a question like, what do hackable games look like? Or what does it look like to do mobile web making? Or how are we going to get this damn marketplace to be successful? Um, and so David's vision, and, and I think it's increasingly supported across the leadership of Mozilla is we need a mechanism to ask questions like that and to come out with answers and to try stuff, but try stuff in an incredibly directed way uh, and try stuff in a way that engages community around those questions um, as we've done with Hackable Games already and Open News and so on. And so David's vision is Mozilla Labs relaunches as a brand across Mozilla that has that ability to ask product questions um, so that as we're in the process of building a very focused version of WebMaker tools, we also have a side space where we can go ask those questions. And the idea is not that uh, we're going to throw 15 people in labs. The idea is that that becomes a place primarily where people can go and do a tour of duty. And so if there's a question where you're the right person to work on it or you've got a kind of a, a particular itch to scratch, then the idea of three months of like, let's go see what you can prototype and, and push out will be how that operates, uh, at least for us. Um, and there'll be support, like much like going and kind of doing three months at IDEO and working on a particular project inside of there. But the idea is that most of the horsepower is moving out from product, from content, from engineering through there to ask those questions. And if you come up with a thing that works, uh, then there's a way to go back into the group you're from 
and actually implement it and productize it um, as opposed to it just getting stuck in labs. Um, and you know, part of the reason we put things like Open News and the, the science program there and other things is those are specific long-term standing efforts to ask those kinds of questions by building communities around topics that we're, we're interested in. So that's a, an overview of who those folks are and some of the reasoning. Um, I'm wondering if Aaron and Brett, you guys in particular, uh, are at some of the core of what we're building with WebMaker next year. Do you guys want to say a little bit um, about where things are going? Star something to unmute. <laughs> Hi, this is Brett. I think that um, you, you you nailed it with the um, <clears throat> the chief dog food eater um, is what I'm pretty excited to do. Um, the the role that I most enjoyed playing within popcorn um, was popcorn breaker, and so that what that meant was uh, using the tool um, every day to make things, but also have having that tested by um, real-world users in a way. So I think we, we, we know that we're being successful if people really enjoy using our tools, if they're making things that other people genuinely feel are delightful, and that uh, they're coming back because there's a, a community of people who are supporting them in, in making those things. So that's what I'm going to be waking up every morning doing. And in lots of ways, that isn't um, that different than um, what we were doing, maker. But I think a big difference is that we want um, we want an emphasis on on craft to really shine through across WebMaker. So that is going to mean uh, bringing in people who at that craft to show, sort of show the way, um, and helping everybody uh, to level up to that to uh, to provide a feedback loop to folks in product. Um, about how easy people are finding it to learn and to uh, to assess their skills to use the products that we're building. <laughs> yes, I'm going to think about breaking things and eating dog food every morning, which is not any different than what I do now. Cool. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Aaron, are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Um, yeah. So. Um, now running the product team, which again is kind of what Brett said is not actually a lot different than um, than what we sort of have done um, the last year. Like we're really focused on um, on the tools, on building the best experiences we can through the tools, on building that kind of learning and assessment layer um, into those experiences um, and badges, of course. Um, but the the kind of exciting thing I think this year or with this new um, structure is that um, one is that all of the tools are sort of um, we're looking at WebMaker as a as a product. We've talked about that a lot, but we're actually like moving in that direction where Popcorn Maker Thimble and X-ray goggles are are all part of one vision and that will be become more tightly integrated and that will sort of be driving those together um, under this this sort of bigger WebMaker um, goals and objectives. Um, and I think that's really powerful um, and 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 frankly like really exciting about where we could get to pretty quickly and there's already a ton of ideas that have been coming through even over the last week or so. Um, and I also think um, that breaking content out as as Brett just said is is also potentially really powerful because um, instead of it being really tightly coupled with this, with um, the product and, and sort of making you know I think what we did in the past kind of make decisions about what we could do with content based on the, on the tools that we had. Um, and so divorcing that a little bit um, really helps us be as innovative as we can be and, and really make some pretty awesome and compelling things um, that, that might actually influence the direction of the growth product and sort of vice versa. So, um, so yes, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And um, as Mark said, there'll be, we're going to be hiring a product manager, at least one, um, to really look at look after the tools themselves, um, and and so we'll we'll recruit quite heavily to find somebody that um, that is as much of a visionary as Brett on Popcorn Maker. Um, but I have to say too that the two teams will be very will work very very closely. Like on an org, org chart, they they look like um, two standalone things, but I think 
we know that to be successful there has to be a really, really tight feedback loop um, and, and that we're just kind of working very closely across all of this anyway. So. Cool. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I'm just going back in the Etherpad to see if there are any additional questions. So the last thing I would say, barring any questions that come up at line 178, um, is just that obviously, um, I guess two things. One is we're going into a board meeting, uh, and so this is sort of the proposed structure. We want to start working on this way you know, quickly, but it's also something that A, still has to be vetted by the board uh, as we go and look at how we expand the team next year, which we're trying to moderate. like crushing ourselves with growth again and uh, at the same time making sure we have enough people because um, we don't want to crush ourselves with growth, but we do need enough people. So all of that stuff is in play. It also means that some of this still could tweak uh, slightly over the, at the top level over the coming weeks. And it also means that there's lots of conversations we need to have with all of the people on this call, uh, especially those employed by us, uh, about you know, how actually this is going to work, getting your input on it. There's tons both on the, on the product vision and the teams that basically still needs to be designed. And so imagine this in some ways as a, a preview of how things are going to work uh, early next year and the next month as a, a kind of design exercise where all of us kind of get to co-create this. Um, because it certainly it is far from something that we have all of the answers on or that certainly I have all the answers on. Um, and it only gets good by us working through it together. And on that, I will pass it to my co-creating facilitator friend, Gunnar. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very, very much, and thanks for everybody who shared thoughts on that thread. Um, turning in the Motad to the next agenda item. Um, oh, interesting. It changed right out from underneath me. Um, are we doing the ITU thing next, Matt, or did that get moved again? Hey, Gunnar, I just wanted to make sure that we had time for Emma and Juan, so I, I moved ITU down. Got it. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Emma, it looks like you are going to tell us about ideas for collaboration over web making tools and Mozilla reps. Do tell us. And star 7, unmute. Hi. Can you hear me? We sure can. Yay. Okay. Um, this is, um, I'll just do a quick summary of this little project that um, a bunch of reps have been working on. Um, the idea is that we want to see more collaboration between sort of Moz Party events and global um, making. We see, like looking at the map of the Moz Parties last year, there was you know, all this great participation, but not a lot of collaboration. And um, so we um, have a proposal on an Etherpad that we're working on that's focused on a single project that we've launched through Moz Party events with reps, but not limited to reps, um, with multiple countries contributing, open source ethos, community collaboration, responsibility, decision making, etiquette, and of course using as many uh, Mozilla projects as we can, but adding in um, the opportunity to invent and um, you know maybe build something like a, a piece of code that does something specific. Um, contribution pieces would range in complexity and size for coders, um, photographers, designers, and writers. So um, right now we're looking at um, two things, the building the framework for an open source project for what we're sort of um, heralding as a youth and globally, first youth and globally, globally produced open source project mm -hmm. um, that will document and uh, with a focus on working with kids and youth. And um, yeah, if we have a, an Etherpad there that there's, we've been um, trying to brainstorm around both of those points, and we'd really like anyone's feedback or thoughts or concerns um, as we try and build this. Right on. Thank you so much. I'm looking in the Etherpad and not seeing any uh, questions yet at line 230. Um, I see you are getting one suggestion on line 210 to really make sure that you're 13 and over, please. And so feel so free to ask if you want clarification on that. Um, but yeah, if you want to turn your attention to line 230, there's some questions popping up. Can you say more about your overall goal for this project? Okay. Sorry, what line was that? I, oh, I'm on the wrong Etherpad. 
<laughs> it's yeah, it's line two thirty in the ether pad that is capital D E C O four, December O four. Okay. But and there, you mentioned minimum. something about age group. I we haven't really focused on an age group. I mean I don't really want to limit. Uh, I'm not sure where where that question came from or what the concern was around it. But it's something we could we could visit. I think our overall goal for this project is, you know, to um teach children and youth that the, the, the web is a collaborative place and that there is um, an opportunity um, to contribute to something much bigger and that they can see um, themselves as part of something bigger on the web. We um, see a lot of remix and I guess we wanted to see some focus on collaboration as well to build something. And um, a timeline roadmap. No, we are having our first call on this next week. So um, we are really in the brainstorming stage. We would like this to be a part of Moz Party next year and uh, to build something together. And uh, that's kind of where we're at there. And we'll try to follow the questions here. Are most reps focused on co building the tools, mentoring projects, or participating? Um, I don't think we're really focused on building the tools per se, but um, using the tools or maybe supplementing the tools. Um, a desire to have youth to build themselves. I think we would like to empower the youth and kids as much as possible. I think Laura, Laura had a good term when we were discussing this about education being a combination of shepherding and um, you know, empowering. So I think finding the balance between empowering and shepherding will be an interesting part of this project. Post something on web maker mailing list? Sure, I can do that. We've, I, we've been trying to, I've been keeping on reps just to <laughs> kind of um, filter out the, the craziness parts, which a lot were mine in the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, we we'll can post it to WebMaker. Can you make it right fast? I think that the, the part though is, is that you can, they can be writers or photographers. We're really, you know, it's not, it could be focused on all types of making. So maybe young children can contribute to this when we figure out what it is. And yes, Brett, I think you can maybe take pictures. <laughs> Right on. And Emma, I was going to invite Carla to elaborate on the age issue just because we're dealing yeah. with different legal issues in different countries. So Carla, if you wanted to unmute and just tell us a little bit about what, what pain you are feeling vis-a-vis -vis making sure we conform with the existing youth laws. I'm trying not to feel any pain nor to transmit any pain. Um, okay. <laughs> but I, and I think this is a great initiative and I don't want to quash it at all. Um, it's just within the U.S. Um, where we have some issues regarding issuing badges for kids under the age of 13. But um, as Mike po um, correctly points out, it's not the issuing the badges, it's actually that they can't push them to the backpack so they can't share them. So a lot of the kind of um, great things that make up or that constitute a badge, the open badges, which is the ecosystem, they can't really join into. So they would have to be um, siloed backpacks for kids under the age of 13. And it is something we are working on, but right now um, we are just a little wary about um, issuing badges for kids under the age of 13. Okay. That's good to know. Um, that's good to know. And I recently had a bunch of issues over around privacy and teaching kids uh, here in BC. So. I'm interested in how that evolves. Cool. Right on. Okay. Any, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions that have popped up, but Emma, this is really, really exciting. Um, and yeah, Emma, are you seeing on line 242 there's an ask to flesh out the how to get involved links below. So yes. if you were game to do that, that would just be awesome. Looks like it's already happening as we speak. Okay. All right. Well, Emma, thank you so much. Any last words before we wish you a fine, fine day? No, that's it for today. Thanks. You rock. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Let's move to line 254, and there's a rapidly changing 254, so it could be 255 by the time I finish. But Juan Gonzalez, can you talk to us about Community of Mentors, please? Star 7, unmute. Hi, how is everyone? Uh, this is Juan Gonzalez. I'm in Toronto, uh, the founder of Five Spaces. And uh, we strongly believe in that we should be working on the maker angle of the web maker movement that you guys are talking about. And uh, what I mean by this is that we have seen how the 
making, the working with your hands and, with, and kids is a very strong tool to get their engagement and actually get them excited about learning new things. So uh, our focus is in developing, designing, and, and uh, workshops that t t take advantage of this form of learning uh, to layer uh, other educational content on top of that. And this works really great in face-to-face -face kind of approach. As I said, we run workshops of this style. But what we, what we really want to accomplish here, and I think this is a perfect forum and group to accomplish this, is to uh, find the tools or create the tools to uh, uh, deploy this type of uh, uh, thinking and, uh, across mentors and teachers worldwide uh, uh, using uh, things like PopcornJS in order to um, very easily uh, wrap up the experience of, of assembling and, 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 and running one of these workshops in a way that uh, other people can join just uh, 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 adopt that. Um, I think there is um, uh, a very strong amount of uh, synergy that is possible in the creation of these tools. Uh, as I said, we, we're strongly focused on popcorn at this, at this time. We believe the whole idea of interactive video that brings in uh, some of the best thinking that we have seen in some of the demos and, and, and creating something that will be sort of the next level of instructables that is focused not just on sharing what I've done, but actually I'm walking with a, a, a kid through the web, but uh, like something that feels like step-by-step hand-holding through an activity or it could, could have some future. Um, we, we are already working in this, uh, on, 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 on creating this tool, but we'd love to see how this effort mm -hmm. resonates with other people in the group and what kind of collaborations are possible. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Juan, there's a couple of questions. Line 271 in the Etherpad is uh, how can people get involved? And someone's been kind enough to put a 1, 2, 3 list sitting there for answers. And then secondly, there was a question, were you um, paying attention to the Making the Web Physical stream at the Mozilla Festival? And there's a link there. I was not aware of that making the web physical, but I, it already is resonating in my, in my head. So I'm, I have a feeling there's good stuff going on there. Right on. And then a next question, um, do you have a link to what you have built with Popcorn or a repository? Not a, it's not a, a publicly available, uh, but a, as soon as I figure out who the, the right people to, to help out in this initiative, I'm, I'm definitely willing to open that up and get, get, get help, and mostly get help in, in, in building this. I, I was, uh, I've been following Popcorn for the last year uh, since I was involved in some of the Mozilla um, uh, workshops for journalism. And, and um, there was, um, I mean, the tool has been in my mind as kind of a fantastic resource. Um, but I, I cannot claim to have all the experience I, will, I would love to have in this, in this area. So um, support in this area would be, would be great. Awesome. And yeah, I would certainly encourage you to put any asks out to the webmaker list that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and there's also, if you just uh, look on line 276, there's an invitation to come back and uh, on a future call share the tool or the prototype once you're ready. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, I am looking at the clock and wanting to honor other things on the agenda. So Juan, thank you so much. And do take a look at all of the requests you're seeing in the 270s of this Etherpad. Lots of requests to share and just get involved on Popcorn Mail List and elsewhere. But we thank you so much. This is super thank exciting. Thank you. All right. Tim Wang, Line 286, tell us about the ITU initiative. It's not Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, uh, just unmuted hey, hey. your work. Hello? Okay. Oh, awesome. Great. Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, it's been a crazy week. Uh, thanks to everybody who's chipped in to kind of help get this up, uh, Ross in, in particular. Um, so we've been doing a number of projects uh, having to do with the World Conference on International Telecommunications, uh, which is a meeting of the International Telecommunications uh, Union, which is meeting in uh, Dubai um, as of this Monday and running all the way until next Friday. Um, and uh, specifically, we're trying to get some grassroots support uh, around mobilizing people to advocate for sort of more transparent Internet governance. Um, you know, one of the problems with the ITU and, and uh, Wiki in particular is that uh, there's a lot of decisions that will be made about the future of the web that are kind of completely sort of not transparent and, and essentially decided by, by governments. Um, so we've launched a number of projects uh, as of the end of last week, um, and uh, you can kind of see 
uh, these things under the outputs um, that I've written up on the Etherpad. Um, one of them is that we've sort of launched an official position, right? So Mozilla has come out um, explaining how it feels about the ITU and, and what it would like to see changed in the future. Um, but more importantly, I think in order to get kind of people moving on the ground, we've launched sort of this en engagement kit, um, which gets people moving um, to learn more about the ITU, but also to kind of advocate um, for transparent internet governance. So um, that includes um, sort of a, a set of resources, but also a popcorn project uh, that we've launched that lets people uh, sort of uh, remix a video around the ITU and kind of localize for their own sort of um, uh, immediate issues um, and also kind of rally local uh, sort of events. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's kind of the overview of it. Uh, I'm taking a look down now for the questions. I can take the second one first, which is that uh, the timeline is running essentially from uh, the 3rd of December, which is Monday, this past Monday to the 14th, which is uh, Friday. Um, and, uh, and it's totally still useful for people to get involved. We're looking for as many people to get involved uh, as possible, particularly in kind of uh, rolling out uh, popcorn videos and kind of just spreading the word uh, that this is all happening. Um, you know, as the delegates meet, uh, we're having sort of pressure being put on them both internationally through the Internet and then also by people on the ground uh, that we funded um, as well. Um, so, so that's our kind of timeline. Um, Gunnar, should I just keep going, rolling through the questions, or? Sure, feel free to do that. Okay, great. Um, and uh, and then the other two, I can just take really quickly uh, on how's it going so far. Um, the response has been really great. Um, one of the communities that we're working with uh, is Remo um, and Pieros and, and William over there. Um, and uh, the response has been pretty strong. People have been spreading the message, kind of coordinating local events, um, and uh, and doing sort of a number of uh, remixes of the, the popcorn video. Um, you can see also below that we also got a nice sort of retweet from Anonymous, so we'll see kind of how all that turns out as well. Um, but we're kind of it kind of goes to the sort of broad kind of community that we're seeing pop up around this. So we're pretty pretty excited to see that. Um, and then I see a final question here around the uh, second to final question here around the uh, the metrics for uh, success. Um, I think the, it's sort of been answered below there. Um, I think the certainly one big thing we want to make sure is that there's sort of no new regulations. Um, the ITU is considering a number of things uh, that sort of be really, really negative sort of in terms of giving countries more power to sort of censor online. So I think that's certainly one goal. Um, and, uh, and the second one I think totally goes to what I was going to go to next. Um, for the links to popcorn uh, videos, uh, I do have them. I'll actually go ahead and just post them after I stop talking under here. Um, and uh, are there any specific folks that people can contact in addition to remixing the projects? Yes, there are. Um, so uh, in addition to me, um, who you can get in touch with. Uh, part of this project has been that we've kind of played around with using micro grants to kind of encourage um, advocacy. Um, and so we've funded a number of people in countries around the world who are doing sort of small projects over the next week around uh, the ITU. And so there's, there's sort of an international presence there. Um, and as being noted down there, there's also a, a petition that people can sign on to. So. Awesome. Great. Thank you okay. so much, Kim. Great leadership. Okay, thank thank you. you so much. <clears throat> All right. We have a minute and a half left. Jacob, apologies for compressing your Hive Story Camp item, but do you want to just say 60 seconds worth of context and encourage people to click on the link? Sure. Um, so yeah, click on the link and check out my two-minute video that I put together last night on the upcoming Hive Story Camp. Um, we're going to launch approximately January 17th. Um, and if you haven't heard of Hive New York City, um, I put a little boy that played in there. Uh, it's a Mozilla project to fuel collaboration. There's lots of great um, youth empowerment organizations uh, in New York City that want to get their hands on webmaker tools um, like Popcorn and Symbol. And we're going to allow that um, by putting together peer-to-peer -to -peer activity labs. So um, the fabulous Laura Hilliger has been um, strumming up a bunch of really awesome activity kits, um, which are hackable learning activities. Um, and so the kits uh, come up with icebreakers and tool tips and um, story ideas, um, and they're designed to be really digestible and live online for mentors, educators, activators, um, folks who really want to spread the love and craft of web making. Um, so we're going to put together those kits, and we're going to provide face-to-face -face meetups in New York City for. Um, all these wonderful organizations that are part of the Hive. And we're going to um, put together projects and meet online as well as in person. Um, and basically, 
uh, share really great stories. Um, we're going to make how-to videos. We want to do interactive slam poetry. We want to do um, culturally relevant remix, all kinds of things. Um, so if you'll just look in the Etherpad and watch the video, I think you'll get an idea of what's going to happen. Um, yeah, so. Um, and we also want to um, <coughs> continue to iterate on StoryCamp and make it localized um, in other places. Awesome. Jacob, thank you so much, and thank you for dealing with the time compression. So I believe that is all we have time for today. Matt, any last announcements before we thank our ginormous participant group? I'm going to take that as a no, or a Matt is enjoying the beachfront view in Costa Rica. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Sorry, and, and every Good. So Matt, any other announcements before we sign off? No, I don't think so. Lots going on this week. So I just want to draw people's attention to line 399. Um, so if you want to get the word out on some of the items we've heard presented in today's call through our various social media channels like the um, Zilla Twitter and Facebook accounts, you can just click on the link in line 399 slash tweets um, and just go ahead and write in your sample tweets and posts and we will get them out. Awesome. Matt, thank you so much. Thanks to everybody who spoke and participated on today's call. We will see you next week on the Mozilla WebMaker Community Call. Everybody have a great week, and thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.